Welcome back out to the greenhouse. It's freezing out here on day six of our compost heater being active. Now, I can warm myself up very quickly. The whole greenhouse is just plain steamy. It's like 80 some degrees in here, maybe 82, and it's like 37 outside. So that's a huge difference from ambient temperature outside. Our pile is just steaming away as we keep getting rain on it and it's building heat, but it's not getting too hot. We don't have bad nitrogen levels. Too much nitrogen can really ramp that heat up and overcook the pile and just make it burn out very quickly. So getting the ratios right is very important. Now I swapped a fan around, warming my hand up here. So here on day six, I wanna draw some conclusions, share some temperatures, and just in general, what we're going to be doing going forward. Now if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let's grab some temperatures from our water here. So we had this pump running constant and it was holding well over 100 degrees while it was just running on its own. So we've basically just been doing purely experiments. Like we've been keeping the water off more than on in order to kind of conserve the heat and not disperse too much. We had to get this flow rate correct. So the tank is really sitting only like 63, 64 degrees. That is just super hot feeling. I've already burnt myself on this once, but it just feels good. My hands were pretty darn cold, so I had to slowly warm them up so I don't scald them, but man, this is just insane. You can see the steam coming off. It's getting too hot for my hand. So if you find this stuff interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now, I owe credit to Jean Payne himself. Now, he was a Swiss-born French inventor. He lived from 1928 to 1981 before I was even born. So I'm using his method to heat this water, to heat my hands, to heat this tank, using the natural decomposition process to get all of this free energy harvested into the greenhouse. I mean, we could heat this tank up from 60 degrees all the way up to 80 or 90 by the time it got dark outside, but we really don't need to waste all that energy right now. So the whole point of this system is obviously to store thermal mass. Now, we have to set our timer up. I'm gonna do a separate video on setting up the timer, operating it, and why we do that for the longevity and having a little bit of runtime at night and being able to get the most out of our systems with little cost. Now Jean Payne could heat groundwater temperature all the way up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or about 60 degrees Celsius and that was at a rate of about four liters per minute, about one gallon, a little less than a gallon. So we're trying to cut our flow. Now I've messed with this ball valve so much that I think that really messes with the flow. We're not having a super hot spike of 140 degrees, but we are seeing going up to at least almost 130. I always have to take my hand away. I burnt myself the one time to get 130 reading. So I don't do that anymore. Once I feel it getting to a certain point, I just let go because it's constantly pushing like 105 to 115 degrees, depending on how cold it is outside, how cold it is along the wall of the greenhouse. We're transferring that heat to the greenhouse floor also. A lot of this PEX is underneath the soil and it's up along the outer wall of the greenhouse. So it's not just right from the pile directly into the overflow tank, which would prove to have a lot higher temperatures, obviously, but we are transferring through this PEX because this PEX will get very warm if it has a hot burst come through it. If you have the system off all day and turn it on, you'll have like 140 come out for maybe a couple of minutes and then it'll level off to maybe 120 and then it'll drop to about 106 at the least. So we're pushing well over 100 degrees and we could even slow flow rate a little more to bump the temperature up but it's almost unnecessary. We're going to steam off all of that heat. So what I'm doing is slowly pushing all of this, transferring heat through all of these PEX lines throughout the greenhouse. And the size of our pile was about 11 tons when we started. Could have been a little more, probably not much less than that. I tried to figure it out and 
do the rough math on it. Now, Jean Payne had a pile four to five times, 40, 50 tons. So we are using what we have for a resource. I had to use a borrowed tractor to dump this, and it's a whole lot of moving pieces to get this set up, and I understand not everybody can do this. So, so you can also do this on a small scale with the same exact ideals and systems that we have and still have good success. So we've seen spikes of 130, 140 degrees, about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. So as I've shown, these temperatures do level back off and they're not at that huge spike temperature. Now we're just shy of replicating a Jean Payne system. We could tweak it a little more to get more heat in here, it's not fully cold outside yet. We don't have those winter temperatures. It's a very mild fall and early winter. So we've been very lucky to get all of this set up, to have that preparation period to get plants going, to get systems like this set up, and to have all these systems in place, like our geothermals constantly running, our air heater, our DIY compost space heater is constantly running. And that's why I swapped that fan to it for a 12 watt draw as opposed to our larger fans that I took off here. That was like almost 25 to 30 watt draw per hour. So we halved the draw and we can run both these fans with no sunlight coming through and they're not pulsing very much. We don't have very thick clouds. So on those rainy days, these will still pulse. If you have little to no activity, they will still pulse and they still perform their duty, just not at a full rate. So with the water system, we're achieving our own goals. We're not actually trying to get 140 degrees to run out of this thing constantly on tap. I want to use this to pull the 105 degrees that are sitting in here right now. Man, that feels so good. It is quite amazing to have bath water coming out inside the greenhouse here. Another thing that hinders us is the PEX line. Now we have the 100 foot in the greenhouse we covered and we have the 100 foot wrapped around the barrel which we've covered many times leading up to the build and the process of getting all this set up. So. Those packs are not the ideal transfer lines. We could transfer much more heat through metal. Obviously, copper isn't the way to go because it negates the effects of compost. So these are all things I've covered before and I'm sorry to be repetitious, but it is very important if you're actually trying to do this for yourself and trying to have the best efficiency possible. And all of these pieces were recycled, all stuff we already had on hand except a few little bits and pieces to get things stuck together. So the little fittings and stuff we haven't spent very much. The only thing we really invested in is new pumps and new fans and things like that. And that was just to test all our systems and they will get put to use somewhere else. So while we're pulling all this heat, all these BTUs into this tank off of the water, we're cooling the pile down slowly, but as long as we can do it slow enough, we can have a good balance of heat creation to heat transfer into the greenhouse, and we're not cooling that pile down too fast. And that really comes into effect when you measure the BTUs you're pulling. We're pulling a lot of energy, thousands and thousands of BTUs into this greenhouse through the air and through the water constantly. So just quick math, quick measurements. One ton of compost creates about 64 to 6,500 BTUs per hour. 11 tons should in theory create 64, 65,000 BTUs per hour plus. And that's at a reserved rate. So with 60 some thousand BTUs at our disposal, we don't have to worry about cooling it off too much. So the theory is, is that you don't want to draw the heat faster than the compost can create. So we still have another water heating system that we can hook up. Oh, my knees. So we've got this rubber hose here and I've showed this. I showed the process of setting it up. Little space heater is very nice. We'll be running the rubber hose to our pond down here. We're going to go check out the compost pile itself. Boy sitting about 140. 45, 146 degrees there. I haven't insulated this yet. You can see steam rolling off the top of her here. Now this thing is just massive. Transfer lines working perfectly. Nice little DIY insulation there. So what I wanted to share is this little fan here. Now I had just put this right over a piece of wire that I used. You can see the wire. I just wrapped the wire around to mount this fan. And I have this little piece of mesh wire cloth that I use and it protects anything from disrupting or breaking my blades. And we are getting a very good airflow out of this. I think I have an inset. We can check the flow right here. Just trying to give a good background so we can see what kind of air it's pushing here. Oh, 
all the way back here. It is wicking it away pretty quickly. And that is probably about three and a half, four feet away from it. It's a little hard to see the smoke when it's not fully sunny out here. That little guy's rated for 88 cubic feet per minute, and we're probably losing 20 to 30 percent of that going through this huge tube. And it's blowing out pretty darn hot, and it's blowing out at a pretty darn good rate here. So with this larger fan, we were probably pushing 100 and some odd, probably closer to 100 cubic feet per minute. And then down here with this one, we're probably right around 60, 50, 60 cubic feet per minute. So it probably takes a little over an hour to circulate the entirety of this greenhouse, but that's pretty darn cool because we're heating up the greenhouse, the geothermal's blowing out down in the middle of the greenhouse. I mean, it's cold outside. Nothing's still alive in our garden, our veggie garden or anything, just perennials that are really cold tolerant. Pretty darn cool to have all this heat blowing and running on autonomous systems nonetheless. This just takes care of itself. It just runs and runs and I really don't have to do anything. This can run for the next seven months and just keep producing about 100 degrees in the greenhouse. We may see some spikes, we may see some dips in the winter time. Depending on what we insulate this pile with, I want to take a bunch of leaves and tarp in the top of this pile so we're not losing a ton of heat outside now that the temperatures are actually dropping quite a bit. And we've got a bunch of cold rain, so that actually helped the pile by soaking in that whole outer layer. So if I can cover it up real good, we can have one big moist ball of compost that will be well insulated around and should burn for many months. So when we originally started, we had a large pump pushing a great volume. We had a large fan pushing a great volume and we just waned the systems down and tweaked them till we got them right where we wanted them. So if anybody's got any questions on what I covered today, I tried to answer some questions there but there's still a lot of questions i get it i have questions myself and i'm constantly researching and looking things up so there's always stuff to be learned i'm going to be using this timer for our water pump i got to get one for our other water pump so we'll have two timers our fans are on a timer so both of these water moving systems in this corner both those solar systems one for our compost heating, one for our pond here. Those will both be on timers to get better longevity because the water pumps could draw anywhere from 60 to 90 watts an hour, depending on the flow rate and stuff. These fish are hungry. I gotta feed, grab some fish food here. Give these guys a snack. So coming over to this little tray, you can see a ton of, zoom in, you can see a ton of little green sprouts. This is watercress. Now I planted these probably a week and a half ago, kept them nice and secure in the greenhouse and they had sprouted. So we're going to be doing a video on swapping out the aquaponics bin and running the water lines through our compost heater. So lots of cool stuff coming for the greenhouse pond along with a cover, a DIY hoop house or something, a small greenhouse in the greenhouse to cover it up, hold moisture in. I just noticed we got strawberries over here. That's crazy, those ever-bearing strawberries. Then we've got all of our free pineapple strawberries. We dotted a bunch, a couple heading collards in there. Lots of those pineapple strawberries we were just saving in here. The greenhouse looks awesome. We've even got a bunch of spinach coming up. We're gonna transplant a ton of onions throughout all this. Next time we come in here, we're going to be setting up our tunnels, so that will probably be the next video after all the compost heater videos here. We still got red tomatoes in the greenhouse, all of our plants that got eaten by bugs, like this arugula. I knew all of this would come right back and we'd be able to get good harvest if we just rid ourselves of those little caterpillars, a bunch of little sprouts coming up. It's hard to see, but we've got tons of little seeds that we cast in here. More heading collards and kale and stuff. Just trying to fill out the whole entire greenhouse here. We're going to be continually transitioning all the way up to our tank because I believe that our tunnels might run all the way up to this thermal mass tank. And this heater is for blowing heat from our stove into tunnels or we blow the heater from the stove into geothermal with a high powered fan up there as opposed to this smaller one and then and we've got the end of our geothermal way down here blowing up inside the tunnels but 
we've got this like 30 foot plus of space underneath eight foot deep that we're going to be transferring all of the heat from the stove like when it's really cold outside so i really am interested to see if i can't heat the ground with our stove by putting it through our geothermal so stay tuned on data and observation from all that there's just a ton to do i am a little overwhelmed at the moment so now that the greenhouse heating is done i'm not as overwhelmed we've got a lot accomplished and We've got a lot yet to do, but we're having fun doing it, so I'd like to thank everybody for watching all these videos, and we've got plenty more updates coming soon here. 